Hello and welcome. While trying to achieve balance for a healthy lifestyle can be challenging and no sooner are we happy with one area of our life than to realize another part of it needs more attention and or focus. And this can be evident when we are responsible for the care of others, children especially. So how can we learn to find balance in life and ensure that we don't overload and just take on too much? Well, lucky for us, we're speaking with Leanne Oliver, a self-awareness educator and mentor who is going to share her expert tips. Now, Leanne is also the author of The Uncommon Sense, uh, 10 Keys to Unlocking Your Energetic Sensory Potential. Thanks for joining us, Leanne. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Rachel. How are you? Look, you're yeah, very excited to be um, speaking with you. Um, and uh, all in all, I guess you're very passionate about increasing um, the self-knowledge and understanding in others. So in, initially, I'd love to know, like, why do you personally think it's so common that people struggle just with finding balance in their lives? Yes, look, I, I think that what happens is, is that we find ourselves completely um, overwhelmed with, you know, lots of different inputs and, you know, certainly commitments that we, that we need to address. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that can definitely overload us. And, you know, we can just find ourselves just running to try to keep up with everything. And, you know, it's, it's some, it's, it's really a habit that we get into that we just think, okay, more and more and more and more <laughs> just keeps going. And it's something that we don't probably sort of take note of and or sort of have an inventory of what we're actually popping onto our plates uh, and that they very, very quickly can become sort of over full. And is that what it is, that we don't necessarily take note of, of what we're sort of, um, sort of cramming into our days, weeks and months? Yes, I think so. I think that, you know, we, the more, more we do, the more that, that there actually seems to be to do. So I think we just expect more of ourselves, you know, and, and we're just, we just find ourselves, you know, flooded with activities and things and, and nothing seems to sort of be let go of. Everything is just an extra. It's just added on to Yes. Mm. And 2020, what a year we've had. Um, and it's uh, of course bought, parents a whole plethora of new challenges, um, including homeschooling, um, balancing, working from home, um, you know, managing the anxiety, I think, of COVID has been a, a really big one. Um, you know, the managing our, our own anxiety uh, as adults, of course, the the um, looking at our, our children and then the possibility of having to care for our parents and grandparents as well, um, amongst many other things that we've got on our plate, talking about what you're saying before, putting more and more onto our plate. So, you know, with so much going mm. on at the moment, um, is the possibility of achieving balance at the moment realistic and or do we have to commit to just wanting to achieve it? Look, I think that it, it definitely is, but we need to become very aware of how we're spending our energy and, you know, where we can actually manage things a little bit differently. So I think that that's fundamental in going forward. Most people are not aware of where they're falling down. And even if they may have an idea, they are very unclear as to what they can do to manage that differently. They just mm -hmm. accept that this is the way that it is. And you're absolutely right. You know, this is a time that is very challenging in so many ways. And so we need to be even more aware of how we're spending our time, the, the kinds of areas that we're putting energy into to be effective. Because look, you know, if we're going to spend energy, we want to make sure that we are spending it in the right way. And it's an investment that we're making rather than just something that we're getting ourselves at our energy and just throwing it out the front door. That's not what we want to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. So some, some people may be overthinkers. Um, I mean, how would you categorize, I guess, the main sort of areas and, and categories where people may be exerting energy that they don't even realize it? How would you sort of categorize that? Well, look, I think it's a kind of, it, it, it's a very individual thing, okay? So people have different energy levels and they have different um, ways in which they can become unbalanced. 
For mm -hmm. some people, they tend to overthink. For others, they're more feeling, more sensitive. And so their energy gets, you know, zapped in that particular way. Mm -hmm. For others, it's a very physical kind of thing. So I think it depends on, you know, uh, it, can, it can certainly depend on circumstances. It can depend on the day. It can depend on how uh, you are as a person. So, you know, that comes into it as well. Um, but certainly it can be circumstantial. But I think we just need to watch our energy over a period of time. Most people tend to know if they're overthinkers or if they're overdoers <laughs> or, you know, or if they're overly sensitive. Most people will tend, they'll, they'll be able to tell you that they're that way inclined. So I think it's, it's knowing what to do with that. It's one thing to know that you actually are this particular person, that you, you are spending your energy like this, but how do you actually manage it? That's what's really key here. So the knowing is not enough. It's the doing, obviously, that makes the difference. And that's what we're going to Absolutely. be talking about today. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, we published your article and the title is Learning Self-Care, Practices to Address Energy Fluctuation and Overload. Now, for someone who hasn't yet read the article, please tell us what mm -hmm. it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it. So, well, basically, I think that... I think what inspired me to write it is that I think that um, most people tend to accept their levels of exhaustion. They don't like them, but they tend to accept that this is just how it is. You know, I have a young family, I'm running around, I'm caring for my elderly parents, you know, so on and so on. And so they just say, well, naturally I'm going to be exhausted. Well, of course, you know, you, you are, it's, it's an extra demand on your energy. But I wrote it really just to really inform people that there are some really kind of interesting ways in which you can begin to feel more empowered with the way in which that you're using your energy. So it was more to empower others to, to you know, because often when we are feeling exhausted, we kind of think, oh, no, not another thing to do, you know. <laughs> Um, but I think there are some really simple things that we can be aware of and implement into our lives, you know, to make a big difference in, in the way we are experiencing ourselves. And so often, if we are experiencing ourselves better, those around us are actually experiencing us better. Well, so everybody wins, really. <laughs> well said. And I've never heard it actually articulated in that way, but... I guess we have to sort of be comfortable in our own skin and, and how we are sort of managing our day and, 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 and our lives per se. So that's, a, that's really nicely put. Um, but that being said, I mean, how can we manage our energy and fluctuations um, more effectively? Well, look, you know, I think that the, the thing is, is that it's very important for us to identify what areas um, we're falling down in. So there are three sort of um, main uh, experiences, if you like, of energy for us during our days. And, you know, I'll, I'll start with physical energy. That's the, the first thing, the most obvious thing that we're doing. We need the energy, you know, to, to keep going. So that's, uh, you know, expressed through movement. Uh, we've got our mental energy, which of course is our thinking. And, you know, what I tend to find is that people tend to, to overthink or overcomment and get lost in loops of thinking. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got your um, emotional energy, which is, you know, your feelings. And, you know, quite often we can be quite um, absorbed by our feelings. We can be drowning in them, in fact, you know. And it's hard, it's difficult to kind of get out of that when you, when you find yourself lost inside of those things. So, um, you know, I, I think really identifying where your area um, is, is the first step. We need to identify that first. And I think once we identify that, then we can go ahead and begin to address how we can then begin to implement some strategy around addressing these issues. Right. And we're going to sort of delve into that um, in just a little bit. But initially, I'd, I'd also love to know, how do we not lose ourselves when caring for others? I think that the important thing here is um, connection. We lose ourselves because we've become disconnected. With we're ourselves? disconnected. 
with ourselves yes fundamentally with ourselves and you know we are more connected to others than we are to ourselves and to our own needs mm. so i do believe that you know connection is very important so really bringing your awareness to to yourself I find most people don't include themselves. This is the problem. They're busy doing for others and yet they don't uh, recognise their own needs. And or if they do, they, they don't seem to um, give them, they're not at the top of the list, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I, I often say to people, look, you know, if you're on an aeroplane, what's the thing, what's the advice they give you? They say, okay, if we're going to go down here, put, put your, your mask, mask on first. first. Yes. Yeah, and then put it on your child, you know? Yes. So there's something in that. There's something in that that we need to be aware of. So I think it is really easy to lose ourselves when we lose connection. So mm -hmm. it's staying connected to ourselves, you know, to our, our sense of self, our identity, you know, what it is that who we are, you know, the things that we love to do. Mm. Those, those kinds of things will help us to stay connected to ourselves, definitely. And why does this happen? And, and in, in saying that, I mean, how is it that we're just putting pressure on ourselves? And if that is the case, I mean, how do we free ourselves from the pressure of expectation then? Well, look, you know, expectation is a heavy burden to carry. It really is. Um, I think that you know, we can, we can have personal expectations, we can have um, societal expectations, we can have expectations of those around us. You know, it's a very tricky and complex subject. I think that, you know, what we've got to be aware of is that often um, having an expectation is a limitation. So, you know, regardless of what that expectation is, the having, moment you put having it, an expectation. It a limitation. Yeah, having it's an expectation is a limitation. That's really powerful. Yes. Mm. And I think that we need to be aware of that. I tend to tell people, look, instead of expectation, perhaps what you could do is think more in line with possibility. You know, what's possible here? And I think that that becomes more reasonable. I think it becomes more open. And all of a sudden we can, we can kind of, you know, we're not under that heavy burden of that expectation you know that weight on our shoulders that somehow we have to fulfill something here well what's possible let's look at what's possible so this and is the shifting of perception out. and the shifting absolutely. of perspective yeah absolutely and it very much is about our perspective mm. and often you know we we're bringing to it um, very unreasonable expectations. I guess starting with asking yourself, is this reasonable? Is it reasonable for me to do these 25 things today? And is it reasonable for me to assume that I'm going to have energy at the end of the day to be intimate or whatever it is that I'm doing? Is that reasonable? You know, mm -hmm. and clearly it's, it's not going to be reasonable. So we need to look at, okay, we need to look at prioritising um, you know, but I think that mostly the people that I work with, they're very hard on themselves. You know, they're, they're really hard on themselves. And the, and the kinds of things that they're asking of themselves, they wouldn't ask of others. They actually wouldn't ask anyone else to do it. Yes. And yet somehow or another, it's okay for them to do it. Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll take it on board. I'm super woman. I'll, you know, I'll make it happen. <laughs> Now, you mentioned in the article that our energy is constantly trying to return to balance. And the longer we stay in an unbalanced state, the more the energy builds up. And this leads to energetic blockages. Can you maybe just expand on this a little bit? Yes. I think that what happens is, is that we find ourselves in a position where um, the blockage that we may be experiencing, it might start out as a mental blockage, let's say. Let's say it's something that, you know, we find, we find ourselves, you know, um, overthinking in a particular area of our life. You know, it might be that we're not good enough or we can't seem to do as much as our girlfriend can do or, you know, mm -hmm. um, the lady down the road does, you know, and we start to sort of compare. And then what happens is that we start to become very negative and that negativity provides us with a feeling. 
and we start to feel bad. We start to feel bad about ourselves. So what started out as just a thought is now we're feeling really bad. Mm -hmm. And then from feeling bad, we can move into all kinds of really horrible areas. The worst, of course, being depression, you know, feeling quite flat, you know, not being able to, you know, get any kind of enthusiasm, any kind of vigor happening. And if those kinds of things start to happen, we usually find that people's physical health will go down. So they might find themselves, their immune system is uh, perhaps, you know, um, low or they might find themselves, you know, with a sore back or, you know, those kinds of things. So it has a, a rolling on effect. So you mentioned your article, our energy is constantly trying to uh, return to balance. And the longer we stay in an unbalanced state, the more energy builds up. And this leads to energetic blockages. So can you maybe just expand on this a little bit um, for us at the moment? Sure. I think that, you know, when we initially what happens is it starts out as a thought. So we might have a thought about something. Mm -hmm. And it might be that we're comparing ourselves to someone, you know, mm -hmm. or when or we have an idea about ourselves that we're not doing enough for, you know, in some, in somehow it's, 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 it's an opinion kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll start to think that and then we'll build a story around it. And as we create that story, we begin to have a feeling about that. And often it's not a good feeling because we're, we're feeling quite negative and, you know, we start to move into our feeling level. So our thoughts and our feelings start to mix together. And it can affect our energy levels, you know, where we become lethargic. We don't want to do very much, you know. Um, it could be that, you know, we find ourselves very jittery or anxious. And so it can play out in that particular way. But either way, those kinds of um, states of being, if you like, they will lead to um, a physical manifestation in the body. And so we'll find ourselves, you know, either feeling, um, you know, um, perhaps we've got a sore back or we might have, you know, something where our immune system is suppressed and we're getting lots of colds or, you know, there can be loads of ways that it can show up. But I'm sure that people will understand that this is a flow on effect and it all kind of starts with the way in which we are choosing to connect with our life by choosing the thoughts that we have about it. Wow. So they're very important, those thoughts. This is really powerful. So you're saying that from a thought, it converts to a feeling and that feeling manifests um, a physical uh, change in our bodies. Now, this, this can be both positive and can be negative, but we're at, the, at the moment we're speaking about the, the negative effects of a negative thought, a negative feeling, and then how it man can manifest negatively in our body and affect our health. Is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm. Okay. So um, that being said, in the article, um, you do break down all different um, I guess, scenarios, um, how this can um, sort of manifest in, in, in our lives. And it starts with overloading, um, I, I guess, our, our lives um, with, with doing too much. So I wanted to ask, what is counterbalancing? And what are the three tips that you can share to help us achieve it? Mm, okay. So counterbalancing is when, when, when we've become... Um, unbalanced in any way so whether it be you know that uh, i've suggested before that sometimes people are more um in their head sometimes they're more sensitive and sometimes they're more doers and so depending on where that balance or imbalance is is showing up mm -hmm. what i suggest is that counterbalance and how we do that is by you know identifying a particular area that we are having issues with and then taking on, um, taking steps, if you like, to, to restore the balance. And so overloading the self. So it, overloading any one of those um, areas is that we need to look at, you know, there are three tips that I give for, for overload. And those three tips are to, you know, stop the deficits in your life, you know, mm -hmm. to actually... Um, look at where it is that you are depleted. So really look at, okay, am I depleted um, emotionally? 
you know, what can I do to make myself feel uh, more balanced? And it might be that I play uplifting music or I do a, a meditation or, you know, um, you, you really need to look at individual strategy to, to bring back the, that, that counterbalance for the deficits that you're experiencing in the life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're thinking, it would be good for you to perhaps, you know, um, if you, you might need to release those thoughts. So you might need to create a journal and release them and then do something like, you know, um, you could you could actually start um, a group where, you know, you could um, share particular ideas with people and become quite productive and direct those the, that thinking energy into something mm -hmm. you know quite often because we're, we're not actually channeling energy correctly you know if it's physical energy you know if you're wired you know if you can't or, or always say you're tired but wired you know running around everywhere well then you know perhaps physically you could you could decide that, you know, I'm going to just move slower. You know, it's amazing what that can do. Yes. You know, we're used to moving at a particular pace, you know, slow it down. So Even you say slow speech is good. So you say stop the deficits in our lives and change by addressing the issue and then choose to be observant and, and assertive. They're the three points, yes. are they? Yeah. They are the three points. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that, you know, it can be, um, I, I guess what I want to get across is, is that, you know, by being um, assertive, that you can actually um, get on top of these things. You and know, that's by, being assertive with ourselves, to... though, isn't it? Being assertive and, and with ourselves and being realistic with ourselves. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, um, often what it is is that we um because we're at the back of the queue you know we we don't sort of take on that position of being the driver in our own life yes so, so that's that's a huge issue for a lot of people huge mm. issue and you've really established the quality of our thoughts um, can and does influence just how much energy that we have. Um, and I just wanted to read out a sentence from the article, which I think really does highlight this. And it, it sort of just reaffirms everything that we've just spoken about. But when we hold on to negative thoughts, we can create an energe energetic blockage in the mind as we struggle to clear this heavy sludge of negativity and this heaviness translates into the body and causes fatigue and our lack of energy makes us feel sluggish out of balance and weighed down so i'd love to know um, the next three tips that you have that can help um, shift this and stop us from overthinking negative thoughts Okay, I think the very first thing is to stop complaining. I think if you stop complaining, it, it's really um, a major factor when it comes to negativity. And you'll be surprised at how much you do complain. It's actually, it's, it's a funny thing. You know, I did this years ago with myself and I just became really observant over the day of everything that I was saying. And I couldn't believe how much I was complaining. And I wouldn't have said I was a complainer. So it was kind of weird that, you know, I found myself in that space. So I think stop complaining because that will naturally shift your energy. It will help you to feel lighter. You will actually feel like you have more energy if you stop complaining. The next thing is to change your mindset. You know, um, we have a mindset, a fixed mindset that we operate within. And, you know, we, we find ourselves just um, going to this default setting. You know, look at your mindset. You know, where is it? Is, are you focusing on things that perhaps you don't need to be focusing on? You know, are you focusing a lot on your past, for example? That's something a lot of people do. And they rehash that a lot. And that can feel very heavy when you're carrying years and years and years of negativity on your shoulders. So that's one, another way. Um, and I think the third way is to choose a better attitude. You know, there's nothing like an attitude shift, I say. You know, if, if you're feeling miserable, look at your attitude and ask yourself, is there another attitude that I can actually access here? 
is there, so, is, there, is there something else that I can bring to this instead of being pessimistic? You know, could I choose to be optimistic? And what would that look like if I, if I did that in this situation? Mm -hmm. So I think those things are very powerful uh, ways to, to really address overthinking. To stop complaining, to change your mindset and choose a better attitude. What great advice. <laughs> and I mean, that being said, some of us learn to suppress our true feelings and or we ignore them altogether. And I guess this can only cause them um, to build up beneath the surface and come bursting out <laughs> at some later stage. <laughs> so I'd love to know, you know, what, what do we need to do to stop the overflow of, of emotions? Okay, they're overflowing because they're full. Okay, it's just like filling a jug. If you fill it up to the top with water and you keep filling it, it's going to make a mess. And our emotions are no different. What I find is we block the flow of our emotions because we're afraid. We're afraid that if we let out how we're feeling that somehow it won't be accepted. And, you know, so we, we tend to suppress them and push them down. And by doing this, we're not validating our feelings. So I think it's really important that we validate our, our feelings by not ignoring them, by actually saying, okay, I'm, I'm feeling sad. Okay, that's okay. You can feel sad. It's not, it's not a crime to feel sad. I always say to people, sad isn't necessarily bad. It may be if you make a lifestyle out of it, but <laughs> it's not necessarily bad in, in and of itself. So you may have very good reason to feel sad in that moment, but then if you allow yourself to acknowledge that, and, and you know, I've, I've got this thing where I encourage people to become their own best friend. I think especially where your feelings are concerned, because you know, often it's difficult because we don't always get the opportunity to express our feelings to those people who've actually evoked them. Mm -hmm. So stop it. So we have to stop ignoring um, our feeling. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, acknowledge that feeling and saying, well, okay, you know, I, I am feeling sad. And then perhaps, you know, you could bring your best friend out to say, well, you know, that's okay. This will pass. And, you know, it may be that, you know, this is a sad situation. But, you know, what we're going to look at it another way and we're going to address things in a way that will help you feel a little bit more empowered. Mm -hmm. So it's really about being that friend, you know, to yourself. That's, that's one way. So stop ignoring it. I think to change your reactions by responding instead. Mm. I find most people when they're emotional, they're very reactive. You know, it's like, you know, things just burst out. And they don't often uh, choose to respond. They will just simply react. And this doesn't end well. You know, it's, it's not something that, you know, often is ideal mm -hmm. for a situation. We're not meeting it in the most uh, appropriate way. So, you know, just, just reminding yourself that just, just to take a minute, just not to react, but just to, just, even if you just take a couple of breaths, and then choose a response. But always remember that, you know, if choose the response that's going to give you the outcome that you want. Mm -hmm. And to stay Quite focused often. and calm, definitely. Yeah, because we don't, we don't choose the right <clears throat> uh, kind of uh, response often. Yes. You know, it's because we're, we're trying to punish or we're trying to, you know, um, justify or, you know, so often it's, it's not really going to give us the results that we would like to achieve. Yes. So really have a little bit of thoughtful consideration mm -hmm. when it comes to the way you express your emotions. And, you know, as you've mentioned, being consumed by expectations puts unnecessary pressure on ourselves, especially by the mm. idea of what makes the perfect or a good parent. Um, this is something I think a lot of people would, would sort of, um, you know, sort of be challenged by this. But, you know, also the expectations, these expectations create a lot of pressure in our lives as they hold, um, you know, our present sense of well-being at hostage um, and to a future that may or may not happen, the things that we want worry about and are concerned about in the future. So I'd love to know what three tips can you share with us today that could free our minds from being consumed by the expectations that we're putting on ourselves? 
Mm. I think that the very first one and the most fundamental is just stop trying to live up to expectations. They are often unreasonable. They are often unreasonable. They are often um, something that we have, you know, pieced together through, you know, um, through our belief system. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they can be very um, outmoded. For example, we might be trying to live up to, you know, our own mothers. You know, we might be looking at, you know, our mums and say, oh, gosh, mum could raise six kids and I've only got one and look at me, you know, it's this kind of thing. And I think that we've got to kind of be very careful with that because, you know, everything is appropriate to its time. And, you know, raising children back in your mother's era was completely different to raising children today. Mm -hmm. And the demands are very, very different. So, you know, I think that we need to be aware of what is unrealistic. Um, placing too many demands on the self, you know, um, being reasonable. You know, you might have to say, well, you know, today is a day where I have a step back day. I advise some of my clients to, is today a step back day? Is today the day that you need to, you know, have a go slow? Is, is that the day? And if it is, you need to listen to the body, you need to listen to the mind, you need to listen to the heart. Mm -hmm. And you need to follow that. Because, you know, um, nine times out of 10, I, people will say to me, I had a step back day. And the next day, I was so invigorated that I did this and this and this, you know, and it was way beyond anything that I would normally do. So sometimes just that little bit of a, a step back can actually make a huge difference in the way in which we choose to go forward. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. Another way is to um, change a story. You know, we have a story around these expectations. In our minds. We are we just not. Play over and play over and play over in our minds. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then we add on to the story. I should be able to do this or I should, I should, you know, and, and then that creates more pressure on, on top of us. You know, we need to be, you know, I think we need to own our stuff. We need to say, well, today's just not a great day. You know, today I, I do need to step back or today, you know, um, I'm going to do this and this and that's it. You know, and anything else I do is a bonus, you mm -hmm. know. So it's, it, I think it's about being realistic. But the story behind it, you know, if I, if I don't do these things, what does that mean? I'm a bad person. I'm a bad mother. I'm, you know, we, we have a story that we play out and we've got to be aware of that story. And is that story um, disempowering you or is it empowering you? And so I'd really look at that. And if it's not empowering you, I think what would be good is to shift it to a story that does empower you. Wonderful. So there's that. And of course, choose to explore the possibilities. What's possible here? What can you open up as a result of letting go of the expectations and just exploring the opportunities because, you know, this really does open things up and we become more flexible as people and not as rigid. And when we're not as rigid, we don't feel as stressed. We, you know, we don't feel as um, confined, mm -hmm. you know, because often we feel like we don't have a choice. So just opening things up to possibility will, will certainly increase flow. Absolutely. Yes. And I just wanted to read out one more paragraph from your article, which I thought was just beautifully written. So in your words, you say to be in your life and be with your life and be with those most important with whom you share your life. Embrace your experiences. Mm -hmm. Choose not to struggle even if what you're experiencing is not quite what you want at this time. Allow yourself to be with your challenges. Don't fight against them and decide to transform them instead. This is really beautifully written. So I just wanted to thank you for that particular paragraph. And look, we've really covered a lot today in, in the chat, Leanne. If you were to um, summarise your key messages for anyone watching and or listening, what would they be? I think that I'd like to say that, you know, you can really empower your experience by just simply becoming more aware in a proactive way in how you can manage your energy differently. And it is possible. 
It is something that is right there waiting for you. And you don't have to stay consumed and really live life underneath your life. You can live life on top of your life. Wonderful. And it is just shifting that uh, perspective. Um, and, and from what I'm hearing at the end of the day, it is just a, sh a shift from a negative point of view to a more positive point of view. And it's how we do that. And it's knowing thyself and knowing what, you know, understanding yourself and what it is that you need to be able to shift and pivot in your mind and your thoughts and your actions that is going to make a huge like, change in our lives. Is that what it is? Yes, it absolutely is. Yes, absolutely. It'll make a huge difference in your experience. Wonderful. And thank you so much for your time uh, today, Leanne. If anyone's got any other questions and or would love to purchase a copy of your book, whereabouts can they find you? They can go to uh, my website, which is leanneoliver.com. And I would like to mention also that I'm on um, Instagram as well as Facebook at Leanne Oliver Official. Wonderful. Thank you, Leanne. Take care, stay safe, and I uh, would love the opportunity for another chat in the not-too-distant future. Take care. See ya. Thank you. Bye for now. Okay, bye.